What does science of mind say? What is perception? About God. And how does it impact being all good? Experiences of life. This is easily one of the most common questions. We experience everything through a filter. Probably one of the most challenging to comprehend. All the things that make us who we are. Because of what society seems to tell us. So I think we can agree there are a lot of things in the world that are not working for a whole lot of people. So we are changing the norm. We are Soul Evolution Collaborative, a nonprofit based in universal spiritual principles, offering possibilities for navigating the evolution of life in an authentic and intentional way. You are watching Truth Be Told 2.0. So this month we're exploring curiosity as a superpower. And so we thought it would be fun to use our own power of curiosity by posing different questions each week and diving into the answers. Well, at least our answers. So thanks for joining us. And as always, sit back and relax and enjoy this episode of Truth Be Told 2.0. What does science of mind say about God being all good? This is easily one of the most common questions for someone finding their way into a new thought philosophy like the science of mind, and is probably one of the most challenging to comprehend, even for those who have been around these kind of philosophies for a while. Not because it's a hard idea to understand, but basically because of what society seems to tell us and retell us and retell us. You see, whether we realize it or not, subconsciously, our society uh, views life on a in, in, in this very deeply steeped version of weird remnants of old school religious views. Good and evil, right and wrong. So when we look at the world around us, it feels only natural to question the bad things that are happening and wonder why would God let this happen? But very quickly, this line of thinking runs us into trouble because either God isn't all powerful or God isn't all good. But I think the question really is, what if God isn't? At least not that God, right? Like the God that when society throws around the word God with a capital G, it means this very specific person off in the clouds that is making decisions for us, supposedly benevolent and good and all-knowing and all-powerful, and yet also casting judgments and punishments and all kinds of things. And so it, it, uh, it gets a little weird when we ask, like, well, how could God let this happen? I guess the first part of this question is that science of mind doesn't recognize that as God. So when we say God, it means something very different. If we say God, sometimes we don't even use the term. If we say God, we are not referring to that version of the word. So we have to first just recognize that we are setting aside the view of God that society tends to lean into. So we have God as this uh, force of creativity behind the scenes, always creating, not destructive. It's creative, working behind the scenes, as the scenes. It is that which is creating. It is that which creates, right? So God is literally everything, everything you could possibly imagine or name um, or not name or think or whatever. All of it is that thing, right? God is not good or evil. Life is not good or evil. Life is creative. Uh, life is not destructive. If life was destructive, it would have destroyed itself. Life is creative, right? And so we then have to recognize that everything that shows up has to be part of the one, part of the whole, part of everything. That necessitates making room for the full human experience all of it, that we have the freedom to create. The question that comes up the most around this topic, people always, well, how do we explain Hitler? 
if there is a God that's benevolent and all-powerful? How do you explain? Well, I don't know how that philosophy explains that other than the devil did it or something, right? There's a good and evil. Here, where we set aside duality, where we believe in oneness, we, we have... To, uh, oneness necessitates wholeness, which means the whole experience. We have the creative freedom to experience whatever it is that we are creating. The question itself, how could God let this happen, or, or anything, about, like how could this happen, is based in good and evil, right and wrong, and instead, perhaps, the question that we don't ask and maybe should, is how do we exist in a way that let this happen, that created this? How did we as a people create this happening? Because within the full experience of human life, there is, well, the whole experience, the full spectrum of things that we deem good and bad, because that's the whole point. The full human experience is the whole point of our existence here. So when we step beyond this old school good and evil mindset and recognize the wholeness of life, that, that we are not separate from life or the creative force of it, then we begin to see we actually have this responsibility to one another. We're not creating alone, we're not living alone, we're creating together. So we start to see why the question is not really about whether God is all good, but instead we see that life, that us, that we are creative beings with the freedom to create, not separate from each other, but with each other, without external deities making decisions and casting punishments, that life is creative, and we are the expression of life, creating actively. So anytime we stop and wonder how God could let this happen, perhaps interrupt that thought and ask a different question. What can I do differently to help change this. While you're here, remember to hit like, subscribe, maybe even drop a comment. We would love to hear from you. And thanks for watching. perception and how does it impact our experiences of life? Is life really all about perception? So perception by definition is a way of regarding, understanding, or interpreting something, a mental impression. Simply put, we experience everything through a filter. Our filter of knowledge, experience, language, thoughts, belief, systems, frameworks, our stories, all the things that make us who we are create our perception, our perspective, the, the way we see the world. And we're all familiar with the old adage, it's all about perception. And this is often said to us, or we find ourselves saying it to others in response to challenging circumstances or experiences. And honestly, I have been on the receiving end of these words more than once, often cringing at the sound meets my ears, not cringing from the absurdity of the notion, but more so because of the piercing nature of its truth. We see the world not as it really is, but instead we see it as we are. Our thoughts and beliefs, ways of being shape our vision of both our internal and external world. Now this is both fabulous and scary. However, it serves to uh, as this ultimate nudger, nudging us to look at all the stuff that may inform how we be ourselves, others, and the world. Gently and sometimes not so gently calling us to maybe put on a new pair of glasses, to be brave and curious enough to see what our lives can be like if only we can make the choice to be willing to see things from a new perspective. When we can understand that we can begin to have a different relationship to ourselves and to others and to life itself, we can begin to take responsibility for a greater awareness of what is behind our own perceptions and begin to get curious about how we can shift our perceptions and perspectives in ways that create space for us to invite authenticity, not only for ourselves, but for others. We can then begin to understand that our perception, our perspective is not the be all end all. We may be called to make slight adjustments or monumental shifts, 
based on our deeper awareness of what lies behind our own perceptions and perspectives. A key understanding when talking about perception and perspective is that it is never static. We are always learning, always absorbing information, and this impacts our perception. The more we can open ourselves up to experiences and perspectives different from our own, the more that we may be able to see both the triumphs and the challenges in those perspectives. And so this gives us the opportunity to learn and create systems and frameworks and experiences and opportunities for all voices to be heard. Now this can be scary because let's be honest, there may be perspectives and perceptions and voices that we don't understand or even want to hear or agree with, and that's okay. The important piece is a more expansive understanding of life, that we don't all have the answers. We don't all see things as they really are. We see them as we are. We can take away from this the possibilities and evolution available to us when we let go of being right and embrace a new perspective, a new perception. So I have many thoughts. The first thought that came to mind is I am always amazed at how all of this comes together. So, mm, yeah. you know, we have like a structure for what we're doing, but for this month, we are, we, we decided to not preemptively share our questions with each other and sneaky sneak. We're being yeah, sneaky sneak. Yeah. And, and so, this is the third week in all three weeks. Our questions have been directly related to each other. Yeah. Now, I don't know. Maybe that's because everything's interwoven anyway. And so we're just finding the thread yeah. or we're guided by some divine thought. I don't know, like <laughs> whatever or both or it's the same thing. Right. right. But um, yeah, uh, the idea. I mean, talk about perception. Our perception of the world says whatever we're taught it says. And so. Right there's good and evil and God did this and that's our perception. And just, I, I'm amazed by, and I guess this is my second thought, how long we can go without realizing that life, we perceive life the way we, like the sum total of our experience, right? So we perceive life based on the information we've picked up along the way. And I think, at least for me, most of the information I picked up along the way early on said, gain knowledge prove things and what you can prove that's true and so the way i perceived life was true mm -hmm. <laughs> right and so it's it it was really easy to work from that like live from that operate think from that place of well this is true and everything else is wrong or i was just thinking did that lead to a lot of like miscommunication and misunderstanding because i had this perspective and this view on a like a situation or an experience or an interaction and that this is it and then someone else has the same yeah like and, and then it, like one thing like one sentence or one topic or something it can all these different perspectives and they're like oh well that's different i'd never thought about that before and so i think that it i think that just lends the fact that you know we're there's always something behind we all have a story you know, simply put, we all have a story. We all have these things that lead up to how we see things because I've had, you know, an experience with this based on past experiences. So I'm going to show up based on what my experience is. Well, you may have a total different experience. It's not like right or wrong. It's like my perspective is right or wrong. It's like throwing that out, but just that it's different. Yeah. And I think the more, I think this leads a lot to the socially engaged conversations, you know, event that we have monthly that it is learning that we all have different perspectives and perceptions and what has influenced those. And I think that when we understand that, I think, man, can we, can't we be more empathetic, right? With each other. I mean, that really, for me is what kind of activates that empathy muscle is when we can realize, oh, wow. Yeah. If I had had that life experience, or if I'd had experience different than myself, then yeah, I probably would have showed up differently. That's why this question kind of, came into my brain, I think it's like, oh, because there are lots of times that I'm like, oh, what the hell is that person doing? <laughs> and I'm sure there's like lots of times people are doing the same thing with me. And yeah, it's like, yeah. oh, yeah, there's a story. And I wonder what that story yeah. is. And that story comes along with years of history and thoughts and oh, yeah. 
parents and teachers and experience and work and I mean all kinds of stuff, right? Oh, yeah. It's a uh, it's kind of fascinating. I am fairly certain we are we are like hardwired to just like default to the idea that everybody thinks the way we think. And it's not I don't think it's a conscious thought. I think unconsciously we have this like wiring that says I view the world this way and so our shorthand says obviously obviously so does everybody else. <laughs> and so well when you think of it differently when you once you realize well that's not true it it's pretty easy to see like oh well like for me even like even just forget about like how we interact with each other for me in my own head viewing other people there's already like very quickly this distortion of a reality because i'm i'm like why in the world would they do that because <laughs> i'm thinking well they're obviously operating from my history my perception my funny? yeah yeah and it's like oh wait yeah no that doesn't make any sense why <laughs> you know it's like how did we yeah we all have stories and perspectives and and I never would have really realized that unless I had put myself in other people's experiences and shifted of trying to see life from their perspective. Now, granted, it was in this like therapeutic sort of situation, but <laughs> you didn't have I much think, of a choice. But like here's the thing: I think that 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 is the catalyst, right? Is that when we step out of our norm? Now, granted, mine was in a, in a vocation sort of. This is what I was being paid to do, but there was something in within me that it that that was attracted to that. But I think, but I was only able to see the perspective or the stories of others when I stepped out of my own. Mm -hmm. And I was curious, I asked questions, I created a space for people to share stories and, you know, that safe container. And we can, we can do that. We don't have to be like a therapist to do that. Isn't that what we're called to do all the time? And like, yep. I'm telling you, it, it did not shrink my world. It like expanded my world. It didn't um, attack my own whatever of who I am, but it, it expanded it like, yeah. oh, wow. They're so, and so I think that's the, for me, I think that's the key in this whole idea. It doesn't shrink your world. It expands it. And then let's apply that to like the whole good and bad happening in the world, like mm. right and wrong, good and evil. And yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, there are definitely moments where the appeal of having someone else responsible for what happens in my life. It'd be so much easier, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could blame yeah. someone. Yeah. Um, for me, I, I'm, again, trying to put myself in other shoes. I'm, I'm sure there are other belief systems that work really well for other people. For me, yeah. there's just something inside of me that just knows that's not the truth there's not anything outside of me beyond me right like we're not separate from this whole experience and so there is this creative life force whatever that we are you know and so we are the totality of us is responsible for all that happens here and there are times where i love that idea and there are times where that is totally overwhelming and like how what do we do about that <laughs> How do we get everyone on the same? This whole idea of being responsible to people, right? It does. Yes, it's overwhelming Talk and empowering at the same time, right? Talk about a shift in perspective, being responsible yeah. to people, not for people like that. We're not codependent, but like right. to people, the way you act and what you are creating, you have a responsibility to other people around you. You're, you don't live in a vacuum, right? Like we have this one, like one extreme of you live in a vacuum, the other extreme of, well, it's somebody else's responsibility. Yeah. Or they're different sides of the same coin, I guess. I don't know. But and I think it does call for an evolution of or may, I, I only know it's an evolution, but like a returning back to we are hardwired to nurture and care for for one another. Uh, they were doing different research on responses to small children and adults. And so like an adult dropped something. The, the small child went and picked it up and gave it without any, mm -hmm. you know, gave it back to the adult without any like asking or telling or prodding or influencing. It was just this kind of controlled uh, kind of uh, experiment. And it was this natural response, this yeah. natural response. And there's other natural responses that come too, but like that is a natural response to nurture and care. 
And so I think it's like getting back to that. It yeah. is this movement, um, this this perception, and, and not being a, and and it being it, it being okay to say, you know what, I really thought that then, but I don't know that I think that now. Yeah, and that doesn't make back then less less whatever or real, but it's like just being open, less white, less like tight fisted on our own perspective. And I can be that way sometimes. Yeah. Especially when it comes to certain topics, I'm like, Oh yeah, I know the truth. <laughs> you know? Right. And so it's, it's, it, it's being willing to be like, you know, this is what I think. And this has been my experience, but I'm not saying that it's the totality of experience. And so I think it's just getting curious and like this month is all about curiosity. Right. So I think it is leaning into that curiosity. I think that's it. It's like the willingness. Yeah. yeah. The willingness to be curious, the willingness to look at what your perception might be, the look, yeah. the willingness to look at what the perception of others might be, the willingness to to change, the willingness to look at like, oh, what has life told me? And then get curious again. Oh, oh yeah. is that is that true? Is that factual? Is that accurate? Is that still true? Is it is that the only way? Is that necessary? Right? Like all of you know, wherever curiosity really brings you. But yeah. I think that's it. Like the willingness to, to even go there, to look at, uh, Hey, what if what I think isn't, or, or even just the willingness to look at like, Oh, right. Everyone doesn't think like I do oh, yeah. all the time. <laughs> hmm. I don't know if it's stepwise or, a good old Jeremy bear me all over the place. I don't know, but like, <laughs> <laughs> but there, there is like this realization and then there's the realization and then there's the realization. Like, it's not like a one and done. There's levels. There's it's not, expansive, it's static, it's, not static, it, yeah. there's depth, there's breadth, but then there's like, there's also these, um, the thoughts in the unconscious collective that like permeate society just even the idea of God in the United States, when you say, God, oh, do you believe in God? And I don't know this for sure, but I would bet that the vast majority of people referring or using God, like as the name, like not as a, as a, as a descriptor of this thing of what a, a God is, but like God, like the guy, God, Earl, do you believe in Earl? You know? Uh, and, and that that's like a really specific thing. And so, when we, when I, when you, when any of us use the word God, we're like evoking so much of that just because it's in the collective unconscious, mm -hmm. what that means. Even if I think I've spent 10 years unwrapping what I think I mean by that word, it's still there, yeah. right? Like the, the Christian upbringing is still there. It doesn't go away. It's not no longer a part of me. It's still it's still in the framework in my framework. It's still in the, the, the subconscious, right. It's still around. Um, and so I think there's like the willingness to have the thought initially, and then the willingness to have it again and again and again. And then the willingness to look at like, Oh yeah, there are, there are yeah. societal beliefs, unconscious beliefs, whatever that we, we from time to time do operate from. <laughs> yeah. And it's ever changing. Like yeah. perception is never, my perception today is not the same as it was yesterday yeah. because we're like, there's new information. There's new interactions, every interaction, everything you see on TV or everything you read, like it brings in like into your like experience, something new. And so then now you have a new uh, framework, a new, a, a new, a, a new position to see life from, because now you have, Everything, all the information you had before, and now this little piece. All the information, and now this little piece. Yeah. And so that's kind of exciting, though. It's kind of yeah. exciting in the fact, I mean, it can be terribly uh, uncomfortable <laughs> because we do uh, kind of want to go with what we know, and what we've been doing. And, but each day is that this kind of opportunity to like, oh, okay, I have some new piece of information now. All right, yeah. what am I going to do with it? You know, and so I think that that is, that's the path for all of us, right? No matter what your perspective or perception is, like yeah. taking in all that stuff. And now what are we going to do with it? What are we going to, what are we going to use it for? Um, and use it for like this continual evolution of our experience and, and in support of everyone's experience. 
So thank you for joining us for this episode of Truth Be Told. As you can see, curiosity is this powerful superpower when we begin to get curious about our own perspective and our own stories and then get curious about other people's perspectives and other stories. We begin to see this kind of common thread, common, common coming together. And the more curious we get, the more open and expansive we are, the more that we can show up authentically and the more that we can invite others to do the same. We have so many ways to get involved here at Soul Evolution Collaborative. So check our website at soulevolutioncollaborative.org. There's so many events uh, and things uh, to get involved with. We are Thursday evening. If you want to continue this conversation of curiosity more, we have the gathering at 7 p.m. Eastern on Thursdays. You can sign up uh, on our website and you will get a link uh, after you sign up. If we don't see you at any of the other events between now and next week, we will definitely see you next week here on Truth Be Told 2.0.